call the meeting order at 7 o'clock. Let's rise for the pledge. I pledge I get a motion to accept the minutes of September 5th. I so move. Second. And discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to agree. For the motion to accept the financial report and payment of the bills. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. The budget amendment, uh, Steve? Uh, yes, I want to Budget amendment number 2013-004. <coughs> is to use $924 out of the anticipated fund balance for the purpose of uh, purchasing a uh, radio for the town administrator's vehicle, a radio which is compatible with the FCC mandated broadcast frequencies. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept budget amendment 2013-004? So move, second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Okay, we had some um, recognitions this evening we'd like to present. And let me see who's, where they all Who's got them all? Great. Can you sign them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. First one is Ed Dow. I'll read it. Be it known that on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Elkins community, and in recognition of his specialized talents for welding and metal fabrication, including the frame for the town 25th anniversary seal, which is now proudly displayed in the mayor and commissioner's meeting room, and his many artistic creations for the Elkton community in concert with his duties with the Department of Public Works, we hereby formally extend our deepest appreciation for his valuable member of our public team, along with this certificate of special recognition given under our hands and seals this 19th day of September 2012. Signed, Mayor Fasona, Commissioner Hicks, Finer, Jablonski, and Gibbons. If you don't mind, the educator in me, uh, why don't you let him come forward and then you also read and do that right Okay, there. we can do that. served his country for 30 years as a member of the United States Army, attaining the rank of colonel, 
whereas after retiring from military service, the wife and his wife, Diane, moved to Elkton, where they established a well-known downtown landmark, Elkton Forest, whereas <coughs> the white hair is vested in our town through ownership and maintenance of the several rental housing properties in Elkton, and whereas the white hair demonstrates the very best of our citizens investing in our town and maintaining the highest standards of business ownership. And therefore, the mayor and commissioners and the citizens of Elkton hereby recognize the white hair and thank him for his continued investment in the Elkton community. The witness thereof, we have unto set our hands and seal of the town of Elkton this 19th day of September 2012. It was about the son of the mayor, Commissioner Hicks, Pointer, Gibraltar, and Gibbons. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, uh, the mayor allowed me to make a couple comments. Um, by the way, this is beautiful. And believe it or not, I got one being made for me by this artist back here. The um, a couple comments. Uh, first of all, I probably got, got to apologize to Mr. New George. I uh, I really got upset one day about two months ago, and. I came into his office and I started back in the army and vented my anger on the town minister and I, and I apologize for that, I shouldn't have done that. But I want to explain to you why. Uh, i never forget that day, I was driving down Main Street coming this way out of Delaware, I guess you call it old Baltimore Pike or Route 7. I come into Elkton, you know Elkton's really a, a diamond in the rough, really a gorgeous town. Come into, come into Elkton that way and you uh, come down and on the, the left you got the, uh, Debbie and Norm's house, manicured, looks like it's in historical building, gorgeous. Then you look on the right, you see Judge Wilcox, and you see Ford Funeral Home. You drive down, and that really is beautiful. But then you come on downtown, one more block in the middle of the left, there's a house that's all boarded up. It's got plywood, all the windows. The guy who owns that building is an attorney in town. He thinks he's above the law. The place is blighted. I was so upset. Then I came down High Street. And I, I even carried this picture with me all the time. I took a copy of this picture. Here's a picture on on uh, High Street, owned by a guy who's been the CEO of a bank in Elkton. He's hiding in Florida now, but he's been the CEO of a bank in Elkton. These people are taking advantage of this town. I thought all the good things that the town does, and the streetscape, and the hospital, and all the hard work that you all do, and all the time you spend, then you allow two people like that to abuse this town. That's wrong. So I apologize to him. Okay, I, I was an enlisted man. He <laughs> helped me all the time. So. But he gave me a good idea that day. He said, why don't you uh, restore it up to one house at a time? And I went and told Diane that. I said, you ain't gonna believe what Mr. George told me. He said, restore it up to one house at a time. Now we've done 16, and I want you, you're gonna be happy when I tell you this, we bought two yesterday. Made some on another North Street. They look great. And we made, another, made several on a house on Michael Street, and we'll start working on them tomorrow. It's a hobby with me. I'm not in this for money. It's a hobby. I love to make places, affordable housing for people who live in, that look nice. Right. That's why we're going on step. There's some people in this room that I'm really upset with still, that took, when the town wanted to build affordable housing for seniors, they took them to court. Here, somebody wanted to come into Elkton, provide affordable housing for our seniors who need it. They fought them all the way. Now, they're even fighting, this building across the street is not a historical building, it's an old building. And they're fighting that. Why? Affordable housing for seniors, what we need. Someday I and you and you and you, we're all going to have affordable housing for seniors. So, I appreciate this, Mayor, and I appreciate all the hard work you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I thought that was that one. Okay. Uh, 
Oh. <laughs> okay, Mary Commissioner, the town of Elkins, and Rob Massiano. Be it known that on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Elkins community, and in recognition of the specialized talents, especially in this painting of the town of Elkins' 225th anniversary seal, which is proudly displayed in the Mary Commissioner of Meeting Room. In addition to his many artistic creations for the Elkins community, we hereby formally extend our deepest appreciation to this valuable citizen along with this certificate of special recognition. Given under, our, <laughs> given under our hands and seals this 19th day of September 2012. Signed, Mary Persona, Commissioner Gibbons, Hicks, Heiner, and Mary Jane Alfonso. And I want to say, this, this seal Rob does so much for the community people don't realize, but we were at a committee meeting for the 225th anniversary of Memorial Day Parade, and um, I had brought up about all the former mayors being on a float, and we would put a town seal on, and he offered to paint it. And when he started to create this, it was amazing. And between the two artists, what they've done here, it's just beautiful. So I sincerely thank you both for, for doing this. You get the board, all the other board members in there? Yeah, file meetings. Yeah. Oh, it's all of us. I think he's got to squeeze in a little bit, plug your honey, so to speak. <laughs> You want me to sit down so we can go Proclamation um, for the Wanderers Club. Uh, proclamation of the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Elkton recognizing the invaluable volunteer services provided by the Elkton Wanderers Club. Whereas on the third <coughs> on hmm? Getting it? Getting it? <coughs> okay. Proclamation of the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Elkton recognizing the invaluable volunteer service provided by the Elkton Wanderers Club. Whereas on Thursday, September 27, <clears throat> 2012, the Elkton Kiwanis Club will celebrate 80 years of consecutive services to Cecil County. And whereas the Elkton Kiwanis Club provides volunteers and monetary support for local causes such as the Wounded Warrior Project, Boys and Girls Club, Freedom Hill Therapeutic Riding Academy, and the local educational scholarships. And whereas, El whereas the Elkton Kiwanis Club <coughs> members are dedicated to changing the world one child at a time. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Elkton hereby congratulates the Elkton Kiwanis Club on its 80th anniversary serving Elkton and the surrounding area and encouraging all citizens to support the Elkton's Kiwanis Club. In witness thereof, we have unto set our hands and seal of this Town of Elkton on this 19th day of September 2012. So, it's about the Mayor, Commissioner Hicks, Piner, Jablonski, and Givens. So, can you motion to accept the proclamation? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, and we'll present that to them uh, Thursday night at their gala at the Elkton Cesarean Church. <clears throat> okay. Lowood Care and Rehabilitation. Here. Dr. Deneen. You can come right front, hon. Yeah. And just put the mic in front of you and just <clears throat> Give us your name and sure. Yeah, just well, put them, yeah. <laughs> hello, thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, we were just coming um, as members of your community 
we were hoping to come forth today to kind of give you some more education around some of the wonderful new, the new things that Laurelwood has to offer our community as a whole. Um, I'm sure that's, that many of you have been here in this community for quite some time and you've probably seen the ebbs and flows and successes and failures uh, along the way that Laurelwood has had over the years. Um, but what we're here to share with you is some wonderful new outreach programming that we have that can affect our entire community as well as our residents, as well as um, our short-term rehab patients and all of the things that we hope to partner with different organizations in this community um, so that we can be actively giving back to Elkton as much as possible. Um, we are owned, many of you may know this, but we are owned by a company called Signature Healthcare. And one of their pillars of their organization is that um, they, they do um, offer some spirituality as um, a very, very open spirituality, non-denominational, but we find that as a, a wonderful support for a lot of our residents who are, who are transitioning through different parts of life. We have some incredible programs for our residents. Um, we have a great quality of life. I mean, every nursing home and, and short-term rehab says they have a quality of life program, which they do. Um, but we are currently looking at bringing pets for patients in our building. We are looking to build an, um, an aviary. We are taking our residents to Myrtle Beach. We are doing an awful lot of things to improve upon the quality of their lives that's a really critical component for what we have to offer here in Elkton. We will be doing a food bank for our residents um, in need. We are doing lots of programming this upcoming year as far as being able to, again, offer back to our community because um, we hope to become an active member uh, in this community in that capacity. And what I'd like to, um, to kind of hand off to Deneen is that Deneen has spearheaded some absolutely wonderful programs that I would love for her to have an opportunity to share with you. Um, and, and she can go over some of what we are, are offering to the community and how that may impact us as a community and um, certainly open the floor to any discussions or, or ideas that you all have as to how to make some of those things more successful. So that'll pass off to Deneen. Um, good afternoon, I'm Dr. Deneen Glasgow, Chaplain and Director of Spirituality at Laurelwood Care Center. Um, as Robin mentioned, the spirituality piece has been around for probably about five years and it is a pillar for uh, Signature, which, which owns approximately 73 nursing homes um, from Pennsylvania down to Florida. Um, and the programs that have been um, provided are not just for our residents, but they're for the family members as well as the community. Um, we wanted to make sure that we fit the whole gamut and not just concentrated on just our residents. Um, although they are still the community, we wanted the outside the community to be a part of us also. Um, and some of the programs that um, are already established and in place, um, I do have my own prayer team. That prayer team is open and welcome to anybody in the community. It's not just um, the staff at Laurel Wood. It is also community and also residents are welcome. Um, we do have a small chapel that was just done probably about six months ago, which is also open to the public and anyone can come in there and use that chapel at any time. Um, I can say our family members are very, very appreciative of it because when um, a loved one passes away, that chapel is available to them so that they can meditate and pray um, as they need. Um, I do have my own um, advisory council. We meet quarterly. Lately, we've been meeting a little bit um, more because um, the holidays are coming up and we are geared to take care of families that are in need and, and it is a um, ministry. The advisory council is a ministry. It's a partnership, community partnership with other um, agencies in the community here in Elton. There are some in Delaware. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna adopt some families this year for Thanksgiving and Christmas to give back. Um, and we're gonna do some baskets and we're gonna do some wonderful things for families who are in need. Um, and that is what my um, advisory council is for. Um, if anyone has a food need, a clothing need, a financial need, we have that. Um, Signature did um, 
come up with two 501c3s. One of them is called the Compassion Fund, and that is funding for anybody in the community that is dealing with a life crisis. Um, all you have to do is come inside the building, come see me, the chaplain, fill out the form. Um, they prefer for you to have any kind of background information that needs to be attached to that um, application. It goes up to signature, and they have a board that actually votes on how much money that particular family or person gets. Um, the great thing about it is I have had no one turn down. The amount of money you can get, the most amount you can get is $3,000. So I'm saying that to say that we do have the money. Signature is pushing it. So I would love for all of you, if you know of anyone in the community that is hurting and in need financially, to please send them our way so that we can take care of them. Um, the other um, 501c3 is called the Titanium Hope Fund. Um, that is still being uh, approved by the government, but the beauty of that program is if there is a, let's say a hurricane or a tornado in a different state, um, I've set my advisory council up so that I have an actual person on my board, but in a different state, so that say if Indiana had a hurricane or a tornado, my person can get us set up and I can take a missions team through a grant it can be a doctor, a nurse, a fireman, a policeman, um, any one of the commissioners, it can be anybody, and we can go as a team up to help and support other families that have been devastated. So that is another great program that Signature has offered to the community as well as to our staff. Um, we do have uh, also um, a volunteer council, which we met today. Um, our volunteer council is um, people who actually give their free time in the community. Um, most of them are Union Hospital um, affiliations, but the great thing about Union Hospital is we, they're actually setting up a lot of um, volunteer programs within the hospital to partner with um, communities and facilities like us outside of the hospital. Um, so we do have the volunteer program. What we'd like to do is make it a council so that it is ownership, um, actually have a president and a secretary so that the volunteer committee can have ownership of that and that they can go ahead and support our residents and support the families as needed. Um, the other thing we do have is a family council. And of course that family council meets quarterly, that's for our families, again it's ownership. Um, we like to invite our families in to participate in these um, quarterly programs to give them information on advanced directives, powers of, of attorneys, and um, just those medical issues that may come up if their loved one is facing a quality of life issue or end of life issue, we offer that to our families. That program is also offered to the community if anybody in the community needs education on those types of workshops or trainings, we do offer that for the community. Um, we do have our Hall of Fame, and I know we, we do invite the mayor to that every year. Um, and in our Hall of Fame, what we do is we honor someone, not only in our nursing home, but someone in the community. And we actually have a banquet. Um, so uh, that will be coming up next year, um, and we will tell you all a little bit more about that, and hopefully you all can attend. Um, I do offer family counseling. Um, there's a lot of family dynamics when it comes to end of life. Um, you'd be surprised that the spiritual piece is sometimes missing, um, but also the family dynamics of pulling that family together so that when that loved one eventually does pass, um, the families are brought together again. Um, so I do offer that family counseling inside and outside. Um, I have Bible studies, of course for the residents, but also for the community. Um, on Wednesdays at four o'clock, I have a grief share program, which is a bereavement program. Um, it is open to the public, it's open to anyone who has lost a loved one. Um, and I've gone through the program myself when I lost my father about 10 years ago. And it was very helpful in the healing process to get through that grief. So that's another program that we do offer to the community for anyone who is um, needing healing from someone that they lost, that they've loved. Um, I do offer celebrations of life. and. That celebration of life is for any of our residents inside of our building that have passed away. Um, we usually do those quarterly. Um, we invite the families as well as the community because one of those residents may have been a loved one or a friend of yours, and um, we welcome you to take a part of those quality of life um, or, or celebration of life um, 
ceremonies that we do offer to the family members. It just lets them know that we did care about their loved one and we thank them for allowing us to be a part of that person's life while they were alive. So we do celebrate that life. Um, I do send out a daily devotion. Um, I'm also, um, I would be honored if the daily devotion goes out to the commissioners here and to the group here. Um, if that is something that you would like for me to do, I can do that. Um, but those are some of the programs that are already been set up. Um, we welcome you to come and join us. Um, all of them are free. They don't cost you anything. We just want you to be a part of our family as well as our res residents to be a part of the community again. So, thank you. Thank you. Boy, you do a lot. And really, a lot of people probably don't even realize what you do do over there yeah, so much. Really As a way, do you make sure the public out there and outreach that you get out some of that information out, let everybody know what you do there? We are working on that. We are absolutely working on that. We're working on a program with the Wade <coughs> where we'll be able to hopefully get some weekly information about some of this programming. Um, as well as some newsletters and other things to start going out into the community. So hopefully we can get some more folks aware of what it is that we have to offer and invite them to participate. Yeah, well, I can attest to the Hall of Frame. I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. really, yeah. really nice. I know they all really enjoy it. It's, it's yeah. great to have that. That's really nice for them. It is. You know. So <clears throat> we certainly do appreciate all the things you are doing for the, for the elderly. We appreciate you letting us come and absolutely amen on everything that we're doing. You, you might have said this, but uh, <clears throat> did you say that the grant money is available for someone that is a resident? So that means they have to have an address and, and in Cecil County, did you? For, okay, for the Compassion Fund, if there is an emergency or crisis for the family, it doesn't necessarily have to be a resident. It can be someone in the community if they need funding That's for that crisis uh, situation, yes. So anybody from the community can come in and fill out the application. Um, I can leave some applications here. Um, and again, I'm not on the board that makes the um, selection and, and the uh, amount of money that that particular family or person gets. But um, it does not take that much time at all. Within about 10 days, normally a check will come back to me and I will present it to the family. So I have had no one come without having any kind of funding given back. Good, very good. Denine, I had, um, I received, once the weather gets cold, there are a lot of people that come in our office looking for help. Would you prefer I keep some applications in our office or just refer them to you? No, I can, I, absolutely, I can bring you some applications up. Okay. And, and all they have to do is either mail it to me or drop it off, with whichever they feel comfortable. There is a portion where I fill out that says recommendation. And also you are welcome to recommend that person as someone that you know that's in the community that is in need of help. Thank you. And your volunteer time. I work for a company that all our employees are, are given eight hours of volunteer time to go out to the community and help service uh, a 501c uh, organization or nonprofit organization. So you get that information to me, you might have people come volunteer for you. That'd be wonderful. That'd be yeah. um, um, my advisory council, um, like I said, is set up of a lot of people here in Cecil County. Um, Mr. Funk from the high school is a part of it. Um, Mr. Brooks, the MT, he's a part of it. Um, the um, executive director of Emeticis, he's a part of it. So we do have a conglomerate of different people, um, Immaculate Conception Church. So we're all partnering together so that we can help families as a team and not just one person taking on the road. So um, we really have some really great things coming up for families this year, and we're really excited about it. I'm telling you, you must be working really hard to get involved <laughs> all that. That's a lot. <laughs> great job, really. Thank Certainly you. your, Thank uh, you. Yes. Your, your outreach program evidently has a lot of things there. And myself, personally, I'm glad that I heard this because I've been going back to Laurel with the fans five years or so because we have members there from our church, there's members there from the community, and oftentimes people don't know these services are being rendered there. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, you come to us, it's, it's great, we know that, but somehow the, the information needs to get to the uh, churches, because oftentimes on churches, I know the United Methodist Church, my church, oftentimes lists members there, you know, either being in Elton Care or being at your facility, and certainly, um, they don't know that's even happened. Secondly, I think what you do is very positive because oftentimes when you go there, you hear a lot of negative things about nursing homes, and certainly uh, you've had your share up there. 
but you know what I've heard tonight certainly outweigh what I uh, what I hear and what I've seen there. And I see you know you're doing a lot of things back as far as you know rehabbing the place, uh, making it look good, uh, even with the uh, the members that you have there. And uh, you do a great job. I know Reverend Phils come to your church on yes, I mean on on uh, Sundays. Mm -hmm. And the person you're talking about is Bart Funk from Elton High School. Yes. Right. Yes. So, uh, you know, my hat's off to what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And um, again, we're, we're here for you anytime. Just let us know what you need, and we'll get that information back out to you so that you can have it and, and share it with the needs that needs to be shared. So, a lot of things that you do are carryover from what social services and does in other um, mm -hmm. agencies and churches and things doing the community. Yeah. So, you're doing one of the same things. Mm -hmm. But people don't know that you're out there, right? That's a, that's a big thing. I just wanted to kind of ditto on that. Um, I never knew that you guys were that involved in the community, so I, I certainly commend you, um, really, for uh, coming and approaching the town and, and getting that information out through this uh, this meet, uh, this way of uh, getting information out. And um, and I, I certainly would 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 like to come out and, and see all. Uh, the new changes that you've done. Absolutely. Is there Absolutely. is there a particular time or anything or just just, just give them a call and okay. just let us know. You know, okay. I, I can be there and we'll make it happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, I like that. Tour. Yeah, I like to have a tour. I've uh, been out there. And like I said, I've I've seen some of the 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 downfalls and the Absolutely. positives and all. So I, I'm very interested in seeing what's going on now. Yes. And so, do you have anything I can give to the church to let them know what you do? Yeah. Or I, I can come up there and get that information because I'm certainly know that they'd be glad to know that. I do have it here and I'll just leave it here. Okay. You and you can take it. I've got um, the Compassion Fund information, the virtual and group share. Um, well, you're uh, talking about the family council, the prayer team, the volunteer <laughs> council. <but laughs> I mean, all you these things there. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'll leave those there and anything I'm missing, I'll make sure that I get them to you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get a copy to the All right. <laughs> Yes. Okay, okay Lewis. Okay, the first item I have is the road, uh, opening the road bids, uh, just as a caption for a summary on uh, the uh, town released a bid, obviously, that is well aware for reconstruction and uh, knowing paving, uh, sidewalk, curb and gutter, drainage uh, structures, and other related to speed, uh, humps, and everything. And the streets affected will be East High Street, Milestone Road, uh, Locust Lane, Mayor's Alley, uh, that's what we call it, the up uh, on uh, between uh, Elton Boulevard and Park Circle. Uh, Highland Drive, uh, Highland Drive is uh, speed humps and Railroad Avenue pedestrian improvements uh, to improve the safety pedestrian crossings at Singley Avenue and, uh, and Railroad Avenue. Uh, first bit I have is for Daisy Concrete Inc. of Maryland, and there is, there's two bids. There's a base bid, and there's an add alternative bid. The alternative bid is to add uh, for pavement margins, which are relatively expensive, so they're subject to an add all. The uh, base bid for Daisy is $397,396.40. The add the app alternate uh, bid sheet, their total is $14,337.12. The total of this is $411,733.52. The next bid I have is Harmony Construction. Harmony Construction of Maryland, Inc of Wilmington, Delaware. Their base bid is $376,561.15. Their add-all number is $16,118.20 for a total of $392,679.35. The last bid is from Meadows Construction. And this is from Rising Sun, I'm sure you all know. Their bid price, their base bid, is $340,274.25. Their add off bid is $34,589 for a total of $3,000. 
$374,863.25. Here's that Meadows is the low bidder. I would recommend that the town tentatively award the work to Meadows Construction for the 2012 Road Restoration Program. <coughs> Money, uh, we have money to pay for this out of the high use revenue, and we do have sufficient funds. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the Meadows Construction Incorporated? So moved. Second. Any further, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Next item I have is the um, Resolution RA 2012. The uh, town adopts uh, certain codes and regulations uh, to uh, affect building. The last time we uh, passed the uh, resolution was R4 2010, enacted June 2nd, 2010. Since that time, these uh, regulations have been updated and are recognized by the state of Maryland. The new regulations will include the two new and uh, some of the other regulations are still in effect, but. The new regulations will include 2012 International Building Code, 2012 International Residential Code, 2012 International Energy Conservation Code, 2012 Maryland Accessibility Code, 2011 National Electric Code, the NEC, 2012 International Property Maintenance Code, 2006 International Mechanical Code, 2009 Life Safety Code, NFPA 101. 2009 International Existing Building Code. 2006 Masonry Codes and Specifications. 2006 National Standard Plumbing Code Illustrated. 2006 National Fuel Gas Code. 2004 Liquefied Petroleum Gas Code, NFPA 58. All construction plans that have been submitted to the Building and Zoning Office will be uh, considered under the old regulations under R4 2010. All new uh, plans uh, submitted, uh, the effective date of today for the uh, passage of these regulations will um, be governed by the new regulations. So the other things are grandfathered that are already in the, under review. Uh, I would recommend that we pass resolution RA 2012. Okay, do I have a motion to accept Resolution R8-2012, Building I'll, Codes? I move that we accept Resolution R8-2012, I'm sorry, R8-2012. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. That's what I have. Okay. Um, I don't have any old business, uh, Mary Jo. <clears throat> um, I just have one thing under old business. When we met with State Highway last week regarding the intersection of North and High, they said they would shut off the red flashing light, and it's probably done like the next day, but it's still flashing. Welcome to the State Highway Administration. I know, I know, but... <laughs> I will send a uh, letter to the... I mean, a, uh, an email. email. To Jerry Wright. Yeah. And ask him when that is. He it probably... It would, could have slipped People his mind. People over here or... uh, aren't probably the ones who do that, so it goes to their, their hierarchy, and it probably end up in Glen Burnie, and then Glen Burnie Signal Division will take that in the schedule. But I'll see if I can narrow down the time frame. Thank you. That's all for old business. <coughs> Charlie? No. No. Okay, I only have a couple of things. Um, first of all, we got our, just received our newest, uh, <clears throat> our uh, certificate um, of membership for the town of Elkton from Legit. So we're officially back in with Legit again. I um, also have a couple of appointments. Um, appointments in the Historical Architectural Review Committee. One's a reappointment, one's a new appointment. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, reappointment is <clears throat> Paula Newton. And the um, new appointment is Ken Wilcox. Um, I'd like to get a motion to accept them. So move. <clears throat> so move. Any further discussion? That's Hark. Hark, yeah, right. Hark. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. And uh, one appointment to the Board of Housing, um, Rob Art. Rob Art. Oh, yeah, Rob Art. 
Uh, I'd like to get a motion to accept him to the um, Board of Housing Appeals. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. That's the only thing I have. Mary Jo, any new business? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, our town taxi cap ordinance was written probably, it was back in the 20s and 30s when it was the marriage capital of the world. Um, it calls out requirements for taxi cab stands and calls, call boxes that no longer exist. Um, and I think it's something that could be eliminated because we follow state laws. And the $10 fee that we charge for this doesn't offset any of the staff costs it takes to do all the paperwork. Um, so, but it's just something that's very outdated. And if you read it, there's other things in it that should not be in it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and the other thing was uh, this weekend is Fall Fest weekend, mm -hmm. so uh, we have had to stop crafters and vendors. It's, we have the largest amount ever, so it should be a great weekend downtown. Entertainment is perfect. And um, tomorrow is another exciting day. It's the grand opening of the Elton Boys and Girls Club from 3 to 6 p.m. Please stop by and see the club and we'll have light refreshments and um, the kids have been in there now a week and every day there's two, three more coming in signing up for membership and they love it. They just love it. So, I want to make sure. and, and the ribbon cutting at ceremony will actually be around four o'clock. We're waiting for a few teachers that want to be there for that. So, please stop by. Very good. Very good. Earl? Hmm? Oh, yeah. okay. Charlie? The writer did a, a, a very good job when he attended the meeting in reference to the um, to light down here, but a lot of the people who read the wig were misread or they didn't understand exactly what he wrote. And um, I think it unless you even questioned something, yeah. and then you even questioned something that was written there. Well, I totally it took the wrong location. Well, you know. Wrong location. <laughs> and and that, was, that was very, very tough. But, other than that, that's it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, um, one thing, other thing I would like to get before we do anything else is get a motion to um, have a closed meeting um, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. So we can get a motion. So move. Second. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Question. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what is it about? I just said consult with consult counsel to obtain legal advice. About what? Can be rich. Say mm -hmm. Can be rich. rich. Oh, okay. There's an email went out now. Yeah, I understand. Okay, okay. All right. Do you second it? I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Um, I'd also like to go in closed session to discuss personnel. Okay. I have a motion to go in closed session for personnel. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Was it too close? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Um, Rob, still here? Yeah. We will not be reconvening after that. Also. I need to bring a complaint for you. Yeah. After this, thank you. Yes. No, I, said, no, I haven't closed the meeting yet. No, no. You can close the meeting. You can leave at the time. Hmm? We haven't closed the meeting yet. No, I haven't. I just made a motion. Oh. No. Okay. Yeah, just a motion. I'm not even sure I have the correct form for this problem, but uh, I live near the ball field that is between Gilbert Manor and the middle school, and for some years we've put up with a number of problems, and we've learned to live with them. But the baseballs themselves that are coming into our yards now, 20 minutes before 7, I'm getting ready to come here, and I hear a smash, and I look out the window, and it's my neighbor's back window of her car. The baseball just went through it. And my major concern has always been, and because it just happened, I thought, man, I'm going to the meeting, I'll bring it up. What if it hits a person? Uh, they have a baby over there where this window just got smashed out, and you know, it could be anybody. It's a big problem, it's a costly problem to move that ball field, but we're in danger of the people that are living right next to it. Were they private people playing? 
not to board that be right? I mean, it looked to be an organized team. I don't think it was one of the school teams. Oh, okay. It, it was like a, but at different times, there are school teams out there and private people. Uh, it's a real problem. I and mean, we put up with the parking in our yards and the trash being left and the occasional uh, uh, battle of words with some of the people, you know, and um, all kinds of stuff. But. Uh, what field are you talking about? It's the ball field that sits in between Gilbert Manor and oh. the middle school. Oh, okay. no, it's pretty much my backyard. I was right next to uh, uh, former Commissioner Chief Broom. Oh, right. oh, we will also okay. have a window put out mm -hmm. by one of those baseballs. And if I, any of us ever get hit in the head, it's, it, you know, not well, too property is not. Yeah. Am I in the That's, correct place for bringing this up? Because we've been told, oh, you need to see the board or the uh, school board. Mm -hmm. no, I, I don't know. So I thought I was starting uh, here. I would well, suggest maybe. saying Chris Herschel, um, even though he works for the Board of Education that comes under athletics, I guess, for the most part, because that's the field that's there. Chris Herschel? Right. H E R L C or L S. Chris and he is with? The Six County the Board of Education. Texas. And he's in charge of interscholastic sports. We'll get to that information. Rob, do you feel like maybe the, the netting would help? It's not high enough. Um, the fence, you know, I'm sure right you've seen a foul ball that can pop straight up mm -hmm. and it can go 50, 60 feet in the air, which makes it even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just wondering if, since you came to the board, if a letter could be sent to the superintendent at the school board just addressing that. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, it's a safety issue. It and really he's is. bringing it to it's us. Enough. Instead mm -hmm. of sending them around Robbins Barn, it would be easy to send a letter to the superintendent saying a, a, a citizen came to town in reference of a school maybe incident. I took a picture of it. And I think that was <laughs> a, a easy way of right next to the going to board the board superintendent. Side. Wow. Yeah, but I think basically when you deal with the Board of Education, when you go in there and you have a complaint, haven't worked all my life, uh, somebody will react on that immediately. Vince Curiello or, or somebody would, and they would send you to the right person. All right. Even as Earl said, either to the superintendent or what have you. Yeah, I feel like I need to really follow up on this this time, you know, before somebody does get hurt. Yeah, we'll come up with some kind of solution for you there. <clears throat> Okay. So that's all I have, and you'll get that information to me. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah. The uh, Central County Public Schools has a website too. That this all their staff contact uh, numbers and everything. It's simple. Um, Trust me. To walk in there and give them your complaint, or you can call on the phone and give them your complaint. Either way, they're going to get it. It's always nice to put somebody on. Right. Where are we? Right over here, Street. off of Booth Street. Street. Off of Booth Street. Mm -hmm. You go up high. Right next to your church. Yeah, there, there yeah right after his church. There. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Don't forget to tattoo Joe's back in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> if he shows. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. <You> we'll get one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might I get one. Rob. We're on special this week. Yep. <laughs> okay, we'll be going uh, closed session and we will not be reconvening. That's it. Motion. We already did that. No, we did it. I can't. I'm not still in session.